welcome back through this video we'll understand the dns based attacks so for uh, understanding the dhcp based attacks we need to understand the uh, dns name resolution process basically the uh, uh, dns is uh, used to resolve the name so whenever you access any websites in the public internet so you use the website name so where the website name has to be resolved to the corresponding ip address because basically we know through all the previous uh, uh, sessions we have discussed where all the communication happened through the ip address so whenever you are trying to access any website uh, using the name or uh, at, whenever you are trying to access any network device or any service using its name so basically the name has to be resolved to the corresponding ip address so here dns is the, the service which is going to resolve the names uh, for your communication for understanding the dns name resolution process so in this picture i have a, a dns server and uh, with uh, some uh, other servers like uh, domain controller and application server web server and database server and a file server and a few client machines and uh, for uh, understanding the dns name resolution so here I, I have this particular server as a web server so we can assume this is a windows based web server running with iis so in this uh, uh, a website named www.com is running and this website is going to be accessed from this particular client machine so from the browser when we are typing this uh, name or the website name or the url www.com or .com. so first of all this name has to be resolved so once the name has been resolved so then the uh, uh, browser can communicate with the iis so that the browser page can display the web contents which is hosted in this server so for uh, the for making this communication possible the first stage is the name has to be resolved since the browser doesn't know the ip address of this website so where uh, it has to depend on the dns client service uh, of the same system every computers it might be a, a desktop os or a server os every computer will be running with the dns client service uh, and also the uh, browser whenever you are trying to access any websites or any url so immediately the browser will be requesting the dns client service to resolve the name and the DNS client service will also maintain a catch, which is also called as the DNS client catch. So basically this DNS client catch is like your call history in your phone. So whatever the communication happened uh, uh, previously, so those uh, website name and the IP address will be stored in the catch. Say, assume this is the first time this website is accessed from this computer. So obviously this name will not be available in the catch. So since the uh, name is not available in the cache so the DNS client service has to depend on the DNS server to resolve the name and uh, to request the DNS server to resolve the name so the DNS client service uh, first of all it should know which is the DNS server in the network so basically in the network configuration that is in the TCP IP configuration we usually configure the IP address and subnet mask and gateway and also we configure the preferred DNS IP and alternate DNS IP so this preferred DNS IP and alternate DNS IP is to point the local DNS server or the internet DNS server. So with this information, the DNS client service uh, will know which is the DNS server to communicate for the name resolution. So since the DNS client service is aware about the uh, DNS server, so that the D DNS client service will be uh, sending the request message to the DNS server to resolve the name. And also the DNS server will be maintaining a database which is called a DNS resource records so in the DNS resource records it will maintain all the name and IP address informations if it is a local DNS server it will maintain all the uh, uh, internal computers IP and its names if it is an internet DNS server and it will have the public uh, registered uh, domain uh, domain name and its corresponding public IP informations and uh, once the request has been uh, uh, received by the dns server so basically this request we call it as a dns query so where the dns client service sends the dns query to the dns server and the dns server looks into the database for resolving the name and if the dns server finds the name in the database so immediately 
the IP is going to be given to the application, which is uh, the uh, the IP is going to be given back to the DNS client service, whichever requested. And in the response, uh, that is, uh, uh, once the DHC, DNS server found the uh, name and IP address in the database, so that name and IP is given back to the DNS client service. So immediately the DNS client service will update its local cache and also it will give the IP address to the requested browser application and once the browser got the IP address of the uh, a given URL and now the browser can directly communicate the web server to access the web page so this is how basically the name resolution works and here as an attacker they have many for many areas where they can uh, 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 do some manipulations uh, through that they can redirect the uh, client's traffic to a different uh, DNS server or a different web server so basically uh, uh, where an attacker can also manipulate this uh, DNS client catch so instead of the legitimate uh, IP or, uh, of the web server so the attacker can manipulate it to a different uh, web server maybe which might be pointing to the uh, attackers uh, web server also and also the attacker can also manipulate the preferred DNS IP or alternate DNS IP configuration so that the DNS client service may send the DNS name resolution query to a wrong DNS server and even the attacker also can uh, uh, manipulate the records in the DNS server also so where instead of uh, 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 resolving the legitimate uh, DNS, uh, web server's IP so the DNS server also may uh, resolve the wrong uh, DNS server's IP because of the wrong information stored in the database so basically these are all the areas where uh, the DNS based attacks uh, may occur and also uh, if uh, you have multiple DNS servers in your network so both the DNS server will usually will uh, replicate uh, the DNS resource records so again the attacker also may intrude that and uh, he can uh, gain access to those uh, 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 DNS records which is uh, transferred between the DNS servers so that's how the DNS based attacks uh, might be uh, possible and might occur uh, uh, in uh, any production environment and that's all for this uh, video and uh, the upcoming video will be discussing the remaining topics until then bye bye